The movie starts with a school bus moving on a lonely road on a stormy night. A few more cars are also present at the edge of the same road. A car stops there because its tire has been punctured. A pregnant girl named Ju Yan is talking on the phone with her fiancé, Su Hyun. Meanwhile, the bus driver, Jiang Kyung Chul, comes to her and asks her what happened to her car. She tells her the tire of her car has got punctured, and she has called for a towing truck that is on its way and will reach here any minute. Jang tells her it may get late due to heavy snow and goes to check the tire. On the phone, Su Hyun warns her to be careful about the people around. He asks her not to open the doors and stays in the car. Jang returns to her and confirms that the tire is completely punctured. She thanks him for his help, and he returns to his bus. He sits on the bus but doesn't start it. He stays there for a long time, and she gets suspicious about him. Suddenly he attacks her car with a hammer and starts to beat her badly. Ju Yan cries with pain, but he doesn't stop and keeps beating her. After getting her badly injured, she drags her dead body out of the car to his home. Ju Yan is completely naked now and wrapped in a plastic bag. She is just alive and lying unconsciously on the floor. He ties her with a chain and takes sharp-edged knives to cut her into pieces. She begs for her life, but he doesn't take pity on her. He kills her mercilessly, cutting her body parts into different pieces and disposing them off. Her engagement ring falls into the water in this process, and he can't find it anywhere. The next day, a little boy finds her ear in a black plastic bag and informs her friends about it. The police are formed, and they start to find her body parts in a river. Her father, who is a detective, gets dejected about her brutal murder and reaches the crime scene. The police officials stop him from going forward and ask him to stay home. Su Yan also comes there and finds several police officials. Soon, they find Ju Yan's head and put it in a box. Ju Yan's father is shattered at her death because he could not save her despite being a detective. Everyone cries at her funeral, and Su Hyun vows to avenge her killer by painting him thousands of times. Su Yan is an agent in the National Intelligence Service and takes two weeks' leave from office. He sees another agent who gives him a GPS tracker and a capsule. With their help, he may find the location of the killer if the capsule gets into his body. He takes the tracker and sees Ju Yan's father, who gives him some important details about the suspects likely to be involved in her murder. He gets the details and leaves. Then, Su Hyun tries to find out the murderer and targets two suspects. However, he spares them because they are not involved in her murder. Jang finds another girl standing alone on a road at night. He goes to her and offers her a lift. The girl seems reluctant but accepts his offer and gets on the bus. Jang stops the bus after covering a little distance. He takes out a hammer and kills the girl. He then cuts her body into pieces and freshens himself, playing the guitar. Su Hyun reaches Jang's parents' house and sees the couple. He tells them he is an insurance agent and wants details about him. His parents tell him he doesn't live with them and left them long ago. He then sees his son Sang Hoon, who tells him about Jong's home. He reaches there and finds different things related to women. He goes to his slaughterhouse, where he mutilates women's bodies. Suddenly, he finds Ju Yan's ring stuck in a gutter and starts to cry. He is now convinced that her killer lives in this house. Jang is driving his school bus, transporting some girls to their relevant locations. He likes a girl Gayong Chul among them and wants to mutilate her. He captures her and takes her to his home. Section Chief O oh gets angry with his staff when he learns about Gyeong Chul who has gone missing now. He shouts at his staff on the phone and asks them to move to Jang's home to arrest him immediately. Jang takes Gyeong Chul to his place and ties her up tightly. He then moves to abuse her first before killing her finally. But when he is about to cut her, Su Yan appears there. Jang is surprised to see him and asks if he is alone, but Su Yan doesn't reply. Jang thinks he may be a police officer and is amazed at their prompt action against him. He then rushes screaming toward Su Hyun to kill him, but fails to land a hit. Soon Hyun captures him and beats him violently. Jang tries to fight back but can't overpower him. Finally, Su Hyun covers his face with a plastic bag and is about to kill him, but he leaves him at the last moment. He puts the tracker and a little microphone into his mouth without his knowing. Jang swallows it unconsciously, and they get into his body this way. Returning to his senses, Jang finds some money beside him and is surprised to see it. He thinks Su Hyun is a mentally disabled person who left money for him for no reason. 
he gets up and finds a cab on the road. He requests a lift, and the driver stops the cab. He gets into it and starts to travel with them. He finds that they are criminals and are going to dispose of a dead body that is in the trunk. He kills them one by one and sees the dead body of the actual cab driver in the trunk. He dumps the dead bodies in the forest and moves to the doctor for the treatment of his wounds. The following morning, he reaches a pharmacy where he looks at a lady who is a caretaker. Zhang starts to harass and frighten her. Seeing his ill intentions, she requests him to let her go, but he doesn't allow her to go anywhere. At the same time, Su Hyun reaches there and starts to hit him violently. When he is about to die, he leaves him again and asks the caretaker to bandage him. Then, he whispers to Jang that it will not end here, there will be worse things to happen. Then, he brutally injures Jang's foot and leaves. In the next scene, Jang gets out of the car while dragging himself, crying bitterly. Jang is surprised and wondering how Su Hyun tracked his location. He asks himself why Su Hyun wants to kill him. Then, he guesses that he is the closest to one of the victims whom he had killed. He also suspects he has a tracker in him and checks his shoes and car, but finds nothing there. At night, Yang is driving a cab that breaks down on the way. He stops it and tries to find another one. He stops a vehicle to snatch it, but finds it full of soldiers, so he requests them to give him a lift. Ju Yun's father calls Su Hyun and asks him to stop chasing the killer. He asks him to let the police take action against him. Ju Yun's younger sister also asks him not to be revengeful, but Su Hyun refuses to do so as he has decided to give Zhang a painful death. Zhang is having dinner with his friends. They are like him. His friend Tai Ju tells them what happened to him. His friend thinks that the one torturing Zhang probably wants revenge on him. He then asks him to go to bed and take a rest, but he doesn't go to bed and starts to get intimate with a girl. After that, he lies on his bed and thinks about the one who has been following and torturing him. Suddenly he remembers Ju Yan's ring that was lost when he was mutilating her body. Taeju takes a girl tied with a chain to mutilate her. Luckily, Su Hyun gets there in time to bind Taeju's hands and neck with chains and stab his right hand with a knife. But Jang comes into the kitchen with a gun and shoots him right before he cuts off his hand. But the shot doesn't hit, which lets Su Hyun get away upstairs. Taeju's hand is badly injured, and he tries to get the knife out of it, but he can't do so. He is in great pain and can't even move. Jang tried to search for him going upstairs where Su Hyun finds a rod and listens to his footsteps. Soon, the girl sees him and goes to attack him from behind. She attacks him, but he responds in time and knocks her down. When he moves back to take his rod, Taeju attacks him and tries to kill him, but Su Hyun fights back and saves himself. Soon after, Jan reaches there and fires at Su Hyun, but the bullet doesn't hit him. He starts to beat Jan violently without giving him any chance to fight back. He keeps hitting him until his rod breaks and he gets tired. Afterward, Su Hyun calls the police to catch Taeju and his girlfriend, who helped him commit the horrible crimes. He could have left Yang for the police to catch, but instead, he takes him to his secret place to treat him so that he can later free him and punish him again. But that's where Su Hyun's friend talks about the tracking device that was accidentally put into Jang's body. The friend was asked to help treat Jang. He even told them that they could get rid of it by pooping it out. Jang, pretending to sleep in front of Su Hyun, hears everything being said about the tracking device. When Su Hyun feels ready, he takes Jang and lets him go. Laughing, he dares Su Hyun, saying that he'll make him regret not killing him right away now that he knows how to get the tracking device out. His words even include the fact that Ju Yan was pregnant when he killed her. Because he didn't know Ju Yan was pregnant, this news shocks Su Hyun. While telling Su Hyun the truth, Jang breaks into a drugstore, kills the clerk, and takes some cleanser, which he then uses to make an emitter appear in a public bathroom. At that moment, a police officer with a stomach ache goes into the bathroom. Jang plans to trick Su Yan after seeing the police officer. Then, he strikes the police officer and puts the radio in his mouth. As if nothing had happened, he drives off in the police car. When Su Hyun gets to the public bathroom, he finds the police officer who has been badly beaten. At this point, he has no idea where Jang is. His journey takes him to the hospital where Tai Ju is getting care. He wants to know about Jang, and Tai Ju is the only person who can do that. As Jang's close friend, he can certainly understand what he's thinking. He tells Jang that he is angry and will get back at Ju Yan by killing her family and making Su Yun suffer. After killing them, 
he will go to the police and say he is innocent so Su Hyun can't kill him. While laughing, Taeju tells Su Hyun about all the evil plans, which makes him very angry. Then he leaves, tearing Taeju's jaw. After that, he quickly runs to save Ju Yan's dad and little sister, who are in great danger. But he's late because when he gets there, Ju Yan's younger sister has been killed, and her father is a mess from being hit with a hammer. Not long after, Zhang calls Su Hyun to tell him he will turn himself in to the police soon. Zhang has already planned when and where to turn himself in. The cops are already gathered around the scene at the chosen time, waiting for Yang to arrive. An ambulance pulls over in the middle of the road a short time later. As the driver gets out, Yang, who is covered in blood, raises his hand and waits for the police to catch him. But this is what Su Yun has been waiting for. He's already close to the spot without the cops knowing. He drives his car at Jang and takes him away. As soon as he sees him, he raises his hand with a smug look on his face. He takes him to his home's killing room, which is where it all began. Later, he puts his neck on the guillotine after torturing him for a while. He stabs him in the eye with a lit cigarette, and then in the cheek with a screwdriver because he thinks the pain isn't enough. He's happy now, so he puts a rope in his mouth and hangs it on the door. According to him, if he lets go, or the door opens, the guillotine blade will fall and cut his neck. After getting everything ready, Su Hyun leaves Jang and locks the door from outside. He has already called Jang's son and parents and asked them to come over. They quickly go to Jang's house to check on him because they are worried about him. When they get there, Su Hyun has already left. Once Jang knows they're coming, he immediately starts to get scared. They try opening the door, unable to hear Jang who is calling out to them. They open the door, and Yang can't keep the rope in his mouth when the door opens. The knife above him slides down and cuts off his head when the chain breaks. His family screams in fear as his head rolls right in front of them. Su Hyun listens to everything happening in Jang's home through the microphone and tracker. When he learns Jang is dead, he stops walking and takes out the microphone from his ears. He stops to think for a moment and then keeps going. But a short time later, he starts crying bitterly. Remember to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more movies like this.